seasonally adjusted forecasting using Microsoft Excel. Um, before we start, we have to see whether there is seasonality in the data. Um, in this data set, for example, we have total eight years of data um, at different time of the day, assuming that these are the number of customers arriving in a restaurant. Um, so let's calculate the average or total, either would be fine. Um, so if we average the data for last eight years at this different time point, and then plot this data, um, we'll be able to see whether there is a seasonality in there or not. As you can see here at seven o'clock, the customer arrive is a little bit more and then it start to decrease, decrease, and then during lunch time is go back up again and also um, afternoon go down and then during the dinner time it go back again. So in this kind of situation, um, we use seasonal adjusting forecasting. So it doesn't have to be summer, fall, winter. It could be different time of the day. So let me get rid of this graph. So now there are a few steps in the seasonal adjusted forecasting. Um, so assume that we are trying to find out the number of customer arrives at year nine at this different time of the day. So to do that, the first thing you gotta need the sum of all the um, customer for the all previous year um, at different time of the day. Um, of the day, so now we got that. And then we also need to first forecast the total number of customer in year nine. To do that, we need to find the total in all of these different years. And then we'll use regression or linear trend, same thing, to find the total number of customer in year nine. To use the linear trend, you can go back uh, to the video on how to um, use linear trend forecasting. Um, basically, you calculate the intercept and slope, and then you use that um, to calculate, predict the next year um, forecast. So there is a function in Excel called slope, where you can do like that, it will give you the slope. And then also there is a function called intercept that you can use to calculate the intercept, so y values comma x values close it so then the er9 prediction now um, would be simply the slope times 9 er9 plus the intercept so this is the er9 prediction we also need the total number of customer basically sum up everything in all um, eight years, so that's the total customer arrived in that restaurant in total in last eight years. Uh, we use that to calculate the seasonal factor. So the seasonal factor is calculated basically by the total number arrived divided by the, on that particular time point, the total number arrived at seven o'clock in the morning divided by the total eight years date. I'm gonna freeze that because I'll again use multiple time in all cells below like that and then the seasonally adjusted forecasting value would be simply the seasonal factor times the number of customer arrive in year nine and again i'll have to freeze that as well as i'll be using that same value all the way down so this is the forecasted value for year nine so if you plot this how we have done uh, with respect to the forecasting simply like that you can see insert graphs um, something like that um, there is a trend going upward number of customer you can see that um, the total here started with 681 and then in year 8 it was 1324 so there was an upward trend in this data set so as you can see here these predicted or forecasted values are higher than the um, average demand, for example. Um, so it's kind of looking nice. So um, this is probably the best, not probably, this is the best forecasting method out of all this stuff we have learned, like, you know, moving average, seasonally adjusted, 
sorry, regression, linear train, things like that uh, for this particular data set.